Welcome to this care collab of Sogo Vivian, Dory Tenopsis, Sogo Vivian to be exact and to be really exact. Mine is from the Flask 858. Poor little thing never got to get its own name. <laughs> It has a thousand or so others also with F858. It's not alone, even though it is not a named variety. This care collab today is together with Nicole Diana, Simply Orchids, etc., Attainable Green, Karin's Orchids, and Danny's Orchid Journey. So thank you very much for joining me. Simply Orchids reached out and said, can we do a care collab? Because I think we're gonna see some pretty, pretty blooms. Mine has been in bloom and you can see how cute they are. They, they are adorable, they're quite long lasting, but not fragrant. And boy, is its parentage complex. Initially, the Sogo Vivian is crossed with Sogo Elise and Zuma's Pixie, but I'll put up a list of all the other parents. It is quite extensive. To clarify the Zogo part, Zogo is a Taiwanese orchid breeder who in 2017 joined forces with Duman Orange, which is an orchid breeder who has operations in Colombia. A lot of the big white complex hybrid fowls that we see out and about actually came from Zogo. And unless proven otherwise, mainly one can actually determine them to be fowl Zogo Euclidean. This I thought was super interesting because we always say no ID fowl when we see a big white fowl, but it's possible, possible more often than not, it is a Zogo Euclidean. Let's get back to Sogo Vivian. Usually because of their variegation, that is why we like them. We want them because of the leaves. When they're not in bloom, the leaves look pretty. The thing is that the variegated traits may be caused by a mutation in the nuclear genes, but this gene has not proven to be stable. So heh, it may actually result in future leaves growing out of solid green. But what they have found and discovered in the labs when they are propagating these Sogo Vivians is that when even the little keikis come out of the bloom spike, they are very heavily variegated. And then as the plant matures, the variegation gets less and less and less. So they're still trying to figure out why that happens, where that happens in the growing of the orchid. They haven't quite figured out how to stabilize that gene so that it doesn't revert back. And that is not the case with all Zogo Vivians, but it can happen. And here is mine now. Yeah, the footage you saw was from a couple of months ago when she was in full bloom. And I just wanted to make sure that I had some blooms to show you because she is really, really cute. There's really something to be said about the intricacy of these blooms. But you can see that there's something wrong with my orchid. So I'm filming this way ahead of time so that I can get into this orchid and see what's going on. My suspicions are that I didn't get the scale quick enough. I could see scale coming on the bloom spike. I could see scale on the back of the blooms and those I had nipped off only recently. But yeah, this is concerning. And that is why I'm gonna film this a lot earlier than the actual due date. And if there's a bigger problem in the pot, I will be adding a clip to what is going on as close to the due date of upload of the video as possible. And if there's nothing going on in the pot and it's just that I've got the scale in time and she's not gonna decline further, then this is my care collab video. So let's go and have a look, see what is going on in the pot. Have I got all the scale or is my Sogo Vivian gonna become a rescue? Today I am filming on the east side because the wind is so bad around the corner and I want to make sure I protect the mic. If you hear a lot of car noises that I can't edit out, I apologize. I appreciate you spending some time with me and let's see what's going on. Well, the first thing I can say is the pot is very loose. The leka is not stable. There's not much resistance in there. I've had this orchid for three years, never repotted her since I got her, never checked the roots. And maybe I should have, and maybe I should have, but we're not too late. If I can maintain the roots that I've got now, we are not too late. So between the scale going for her and the roots not doing well at all, we have ourselves a semi-rescue. Ah, <laughs> you see? 
Dang, these beasties. Look at that. Oh, I'm so sick of them. I am so sick of this scale. I really am. This is what took two of my fowls down last year. When they get into the crevices like that and I don't see them on time. I am so fed up. I mean, I could see them on the buds and then I went with my paintbrush and I sprayed the base of the orchid and made sure that I painted the entire base and saturated with my paintbrush. I don't want to be spraying alcohol on any roots. The desiccating factor of alcohol also pertains to the fact that it can desiccate roots. I did all of that. This makes me cross. One thing is the roots aren't happy. Yes, that makes me cross as well. But I can work with orchids that are trying to survive by growing roots. What I can't seem to get right successfully with fowls and these tight, tight joints, because yes, it's a Doria Teanopsis, but it is a fowl, same, same care. These tight joints are, for me, the devil when it comes to scale. Right, well, first of all, we are going to maintain as much of the root system as possible. I'll be peeling off all the rotted vellum and cutting those dead roots off. My care in general is just like a fowl. I don't make any differences between her or a complex hybrid. I don't treat her like a summer fowl because she obviously has like the dark leaves. She's not as highlight an orchid as a summer fowl would be. She gets 160 parts per million of fertilizer every time her reservoir is empty. And in the winter that would equate to maybe every two weeks because she does grow all year round. In the summer, that equates to every week and I flush her in between regularly as well. So it's not like she sits there with my other complex hybrids and doesn't get the attention that she needs. She's been doing quite well considering the fact that she's not been really active on the root front. And we may need to give her a little bit more of seaweed in the future to kickstart her, get some roots growing. Her light is the same in my climate, same as the complex fowls. She gets the same light, not direct sun at all. And you can see by the leaves when I bought her, how variegated they were. And in comparison to how they are coming out now. So if she decides to revert back, then that's fine with me as well. I think the blooms are the cutest. Pity about the leaves, but that's secondary. What we need now is a healthy orchid. And what I'm going to do now, for about 20 minutes, I'm just going to soak her in calcium, magnesium, and seaweed at 6.3 pH. Because there's not much more to take off this orchid. That was an old root projectile. No, there's not much more to take off this orchid. This orchid needs to go back in a pot and needs to be pumped with seaweed and calcium and magnesium. And then to be left alone. I will also, while she, while she is soaking, address all the crevices and the leaf joints. So I'll be back with all my solutions that I need in order to take care of this right now. Let's see if we can give her her mojo back. If I can get her all in, I don't want to compromise the flower spike. Because if she's going to absorb that, that'll help her a lot as well. I would like to leave the flower spike on for as long as she needs it. But that one root... Eh. Oops, yeah, that's not looking good. How far back do we go? Right there. So the one aerial root was also compromised. I just took it back to the green. And we'll see how she copes now. I'm going to leave her in here for 20 minutes. A little bit heavy handed on the CalMag here. I've got 200 parts per million, of which probably there's about 150 parts per million of CalMag. 
but uh, that's okay. At 6.3 pH, we'll leave her in here for 20 minutes. And you know what? I'm gonna pot her up straight away again. And then that will be it for Sogo Vivian F858. Time to get her potted up. Time to get her potted up. And then we'll see about more treatment of the apex with alcohol to get rid of any scale that was in there. I'm just wondering if I can peel off any more of these sheaths. Let's give that a go. If anything was in here, I can try and get it out scale wise now that the sheaths are soft but i don't want to be messing around with any of those roots that are sticking out there either so it's a bit of a mm, mm, mm. will it be a damned if you do or damned if you don't moment to leave it. I'm not comfortable with messing about too much anymore. My main object here is to make sure there's no more scale at the base. I'm going to be using the CalMag seaweed solution that she was soaking in. Now I did make a loop. My question now is do I need the loop at all? because she, can, she has some roots that are long enough to go in the pot, including the aerial roots, everything is going in. And no, I don't need the loop. So I don't want anything getting tangled up at this point in time. I'm just gonna straighten out the microfiber at the bottom. One thing I'm gonna do different here as well, same size pot. I just washed it out a little bit. I'm gonna be using only small lecker. I don't need a support for this one in the pot because she is such an upright grower. She's not big enough yet to even be considered a size that would actually lean out of the pot. But I do want to make sure that she is well in the pot to maintain the humidity around her base for new roots. Isn't it strange that you had roots that all fit in nicely and then when you go back to trying to do it, put her back in the same pot, it doesn't actually work that way. I find that so bizarre. Even with twisting her and that's not even bringing her lower into the pot. That's better. I like that much better. reservoir I have now that CalMag solution with the seaweed didn't use any hydrogen peroxide so I'm comfortable with just leaving it in there and she's well up off the base of the leka right there so that's going to be okay now the question is have I done enough did I get to the scale on time will there be any repercussions other than the leaf that we've seen drop off. This one's going to go. These are all questions now that are going to be determined in the weeks to come, not months, because in my experience with the scale that I deal with here, once they've attacked an orchid and it's going to go downhill, it's going to go downhill quite quickly. Six weeks, if not sooner. So we will know very, very soon if I got to her in time, and if not, then we are either rescuing a Sogo Vivian or having to say goodbye for good. 
And this is just me now, just final touch of painting some alcohol around the base in case there are some babies there that didn't float away with the water. Thank you ever, ever so much. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me on this Care Collab, Nicole Diana, Simply Orchids, etc. Attainable Green, Karin's Orchids, and Danny's Orchid Journey. Thank you also, Simply Orchids, for reaching out. Now I look forward to seeing your blooms. Very, very excited to see how your Soga Vivian is looking and her blooms. The links to the videos and the channels mentioned in this Care Collab are in my description below. Really would appreciate if you gave them a little look-see and any additional tips that they gave that I didn't give to you. Different media, different environment, different setup, all that good stuff is a great comparison for the Doria Ternopsis Soga Vivian. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.